see where to start. Well, I guess I'll start at the beginning. My name is Kocho Shiona, and I've just been chosen to be the headmaster of Academy High School. To be honest, I'm not sure if I really believe this is happening. I keep pinching myself to make sure I'm not dreaming. I mean, the entire nation has been talking about this school for months. The idea of an elite high school that only opens its doors to the most intelligent students in Japan? Uh, a place for the most promising men and women of today to be transformed into the leaders of tomorrow. A school built for the sole purpose of being the most prestigious learning institute in the country. It's an ambitious undertaking, to say the least. But the thing that shocks everyone the most is that the school is being bankrolled by PsychoCorp. Who would have expected an electronics company to found a school? At first, I thought it was some kind of long-term business plan. Maybe they wanted to build a place to gather the best and brightest students of Japan and train them to be their next generation of employees. But it turns out that I was wrong. Really wrong. And I got to hear the truth straight from Mr. Psycho himself. That's right. I just met the Psycho Psycho in person. I'm still shaking. It was like getting to meet Leonardo da Vinci or, or Thomas Edison. I've lost count of how many things he's invented or improved. I, I don't think there's a single product in my home that doesn't have the Psycho logo on it. A man whose ideas and inventions change the world. People like that are only born once a century. Anyway, the reason he built this school, it blew my mind. It's not something he's ever mentioned in public, but he didn't tell me to keep it a secret either. So, here it is. It's his daughter. It's all for his daughter. He cherishes her more than life itself, even more than his multi-billion dollar corporate empire. He wants to make her dreams come true, so he's building a high school customized to suit her exact tastes. The name of the school, the location, where it's being constructed, even the exact layout of the building. Everything was chosen by his daughter. His mission is to make sure that the best years of her life happen at Academy High. She gets to decide who's allowed to enroll, she gets to decide the school's policies, and I'm pretty sure she gets to be the student council president starting from day one. No questions asked. So, not only will this school be a collection of Japan's most highly qualified teachers and most brilliant students, but it's also a giant, shining monument to a father's love for his daughter. <laughs> it almost brings a tear to my eye. And I'm going to be the headmaster. I'm still surprised I actually had the courage to send in my application. I, I guess it's because the qualifications they were looking for seemed surprisingly low compared to the qualifications for every other position at the school. In fact, Mr. Psycho told me I was perfect for the job after just asking me a few questions. There's a part of me that wonders if his daughter just wants the school's headmaster to have a certain appearance, or a certain name, or voice, or something. I'm not really sure if I got the job because I qualify for it, or because I meet some invisible criteria that I'm not aware of. I guess Mr. Psycho could tell I was nervous, because he gave me a gift. This portable tape recorder. One of his inventions. He told me that it's therapeutic to record an audio journal when you're feeling overwhelmed. That's the whole reason I'm recording this right now. And I gotta say, it actually worked. I feel much better now. You know, this is kind of fun. It might turn into a habit. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about the last thing he said before he left. He called me Headmaster Shuyona. <laughs> Be a while before I get used to hearing that. realize how much dust was on this thing. Well, I suppose I should consider myself lucky. If I never use this thing, it means everything has been going so smoothly that I just never feel the need to vent. But something happened today that really threw me off. I wouldn't feel right talking about it with any of my colleagues, but I need to get it off my chest. So maybe recording my thoughts will help. 
Today, I visited Psycho headquarters for a routine meeting with Mr. Psycho, just as I've done dozens of times over the past few years. But today was different. He was angry, foul-mouthed, and short-tempered. I'd never seen him like that before. He didn't reprimand me for anything, and we simply discussed the usual topics. But the entire time, he seemed like he was on the verge of exploding. I was confused and worried, and frankly, scared. His secretary must have seen how shaken I was, because after the meeting, she took a moment to assure me that I hadn't done anything wrong, and that Mr. Psycho was angry about a personal matter. On most days, I would never dream of gossiping about the man who signs my paychecks, but my curiosity got the better of me, and I asked her for details. She didn't know all the specifics, but she knew enough to give me a basic summary. Earlier that day, Mr. Psycho had a furious argument with his daughter, who graduated recently. Apparently, she doesn't want to inherit the company, and she's decided to leave Japan to travel the world. This is absolutely unacceptable to her father, because he's invested a lot of resources into giving her the training necessary to take over his empire when he retires. He had absolute faith that his daughter would inherit his company when the time came, and her decision had invalidated all of his plans, along with many years of effort, not to mention an incalculable amount of money. After a long, heated discussion, well, more like a shouting contest from the sound of it, Mr. Psycho threatened to disown his daughter, and she had absolutely no problem with that. He told her, If you walk out that door, you're no longer a part of this family. And moments later, she left his office without a word. Mr. Psycho is a man who refuses to compromise and only accepts the results he wants. I'm 100% certain that from this day forward, his daughter is dead to him. The secretary told me a little more about the way Mr. Psycho raised his daughter. Starting from early childhood, she was given training to prepare her for the responsibilities that come with operating a company, training that became more advanced and intense with each passing year. Mr. Psycho also has a son, but he didn't put his son through the same sort of training as his daughter. Instead, he granted his son a perfectly normal childhood, perhaps out of guilt for what he did to his daughter. But now he's making preparations to rapidly change the direction of his son's life, so the boy will acquire the traits and skills that his sister spent her entire life developing. The strangest part is the exact reason why Mr. Psycho's daughter wants to travel the world. One phrase the secretary kept hearing was, My sister... Apparently, Mr. Psycho's daughter is absolutely convinced that she has a sister somewhere in the world, and that she needs to find her. But Mr. Psycho only has two children, so if she says she has a sister, there are three options. She's speaking figuratively, she's actually become delusional, or Mr. Psycho has an illegitimate child. At this point, the secretary decided she'd said too much and stopped talking. I had a feeling I was starting to tread on dangerous ground, so I chose not to pry any further. Even though I wound up with more questions than answers, at least now I know why he was so angry. Losing his daughter, along with more than a decade of money, planning, effort, must be an incredibly painful experience. But after hearing all this, it'll be hard for me to look at him the same way I used to. He told me that he built Academy High to give his daughter the perfect, ideal high school life. But now I think that was just a cover story. I think he built Academy High and made his daughter the student council president to put her through the experience of being in charge of an organization. The, the school wasn't a gift from a father to a daughter. It was just another component of her lifelong training, another, another step in the process of turning her into the perfect CEO. Uh... A training simulation. And now he's going to put his son through an accelerated version of that process. <sighs> Poor boy. It doesn't surprise me at all that she defied her father and ran away from all that. But in the end, it wasn't pressure or stress that made her reject her father's wishes. It was this weird notion that she has a sister. Maybe...
maybe all the stress drove her crazy. The weirdest thing of all is that when I imagine Mr. Psycho with another daughter, I have a mental image of what she would look like, but I get a headache if I picture her in my mind for too long. Man, really creeps me out. If Academy High was built solely for one girl, and that girl has graduated, what happens next? I was afraid the school was going to be shut down, but apparently Mr. Psycho just wants me to continue business as usual. A lot of the students who graduate from this school get offers from Psycho Corp almost immediately after graduation. So I guess this place really did turn out to be a training ground for future Psycho employees after all. I don't feel angry or sad, just disenchanted. Well, it's an easy job. And I can't argue with the pay, so I guess I'll just stay on my current course for now. Man, even though I know that nobody is going to listen to this tape, I feel way better after recording my thoughts. <laughs> I guess Mr. Psycho's gift was good for something after all. Thanks for hearing me out, Mr. Tape Recorder. <laughs> with that said, I hope I don't have to use you again anytime soon. <laughs> Wow. Can everything really collapse this easily? Cameras, interviews, police. I don't want this to be my life. The past few years were perfect. Why did this have to happen? It's it's not like it was my fault. Or was it? I... I guess I understand why they're putting all the blame on me. It's... It's my school. I'm responsible for it, and everyone inside of it, but... How was I supposed to... How could I have seen this coming? What could I have possibly done to have prevented this? A murderer. A killer. In my school. Those girls who disappeared. I don't want to admit it, but... It fits. Those missing girls are probably dead. Dead! I... Was there anything I could have done? Could I have stopped this? Could I have saved them? If I was more vigilant, more strict with background checks. I mean, what am I supposed to do? Have metal detectors and security cameras in every hallway? Do a mental health check on every student every hour? How do you prepare for this? You can't. It's... It's... If, if someone is just crazy, just insane, then you... You're, you're screwed. It's... It's not your fault or, or anything. It just... It happens because they're just... They're just this, this crazy, screwed up person. It's not... It's not your fault if this happens. It's not your fault. It's not... It's not my fault. What a goddamn disgrace! Innocent? Innocent! Innocent my ass! She's the culprit! She did it! That girl, that monster! I've never seen someone so goddamn manipulative. She fooled them all. Every single one of them was dancing in the palm of her hand by the end. What a, what a farce! People are dead. Young people who had promising futures whose lives I was responsible for. She did it. She did it. She's the only one who could have. That blood is on her hands. And now, now she walks free. That conniving little... And I'm expected to, to let her back in the school. Stand on a stage and hand her a diploma? Mr. Psycho told me to let it go, but I, I, I can't. 
I can't let this go. She murdered people and got away with it. I can't believe... God damn, this is just... This was supposed to bring closure. This was supposed to close the chapter. This was... God damn her! God damn her. I didn't realize how pathetic this was until I hit the record button. Ugh, there are distressing things I want to talk about. But the only people around me are my colleagues at work. I can't show weakness in front of my subordinates, so if I want to talk and have someone listen, then I have to use this. A tape recorder. God. The problem is... Enrollment is dropping. The past few years weren't too bad, but now, for the first time since the school opened, enrollment is actually lower than the previous year. This was... This was the only good thing I had going for me, and now I'm watching it die. I can pinpoint the exact moment when the decline began. That trial. That damn trial. As soon as, as the media started calling this place the murder school, our fate was sealed. The only suspect was found innocent. So the public believes that the culprit is still at large. Nobody wants to attend a school where a serial killer might be running loose. But that... That was six years ago. Six years. We haven't had any incidents since then. It's safe here. What am I supposed to do? Hang a sign on the front door of the school that says, We've gone six years without a murder. You can all come back now. Ugh. We had momentum. We had an upwards trajectory. We were rising. Soaring! We were on the road to being as internationally renowned as Harvard or Yale. But that trial, it, it killed the momentum. And once you lose momentum, it's almost impossible to get it back. <sighs> Sometimes I wish. Sometimes I wish that journalist had never said anything. If he'd kept his mouth shut, just... Just let her get away with everything. There never would have been a media circus. Just some... Mysterious disappearances that would have been forgotten in a few months, but... No, he had to drag us all into a big scandal. If only some... Some random person would just be found guilty for all those murders, then... Maybe... Maybe this notion of a serial killer running loose around Academy would finally go away. Ugh, God damn it. What am I saying? I don't really mean any of that. It's just... It's this... This whole situation is just... It, it has me... It, ugh. I'm wrong, though. It's not the journalist's fault. It's not the court's fault. Not even my fault. This is her fault. It's all her fault. I saw her. That, that woman. I saw her again. The one who's responsible for everything. I... I... Perhaps I'll start at the beginning. Every week... I travel to Psycho Corporate Headquarters to have a meeting with Mr. Psycho about Academy. This time, I arrived a few minutes earlier than expected. I asked the secretary if it would be all right to begin the meeting early, but she refused. She told me that Mr. Psycho had another appointment right before mine, and that I'd have to wait my turn before I could see him. 
I took a seat and began to wait. That's when she walked into the room. It's been ten years, but not a single day has gone by that I haven't thought about her. The one who ruined everything for me. I recognized her immediately. She had aged, but I could still tell it was her. She glanced in my direction for a moment, and our eyes met. She smirked, but said nothing to me. She walked straight through the waiting room and directly into Mr. Psycho's office, without even speaking a single word to the secretary. At first, I was speechless. Then I jumped out of my seat and asked the secretary to identify that woman. The secretary was silent for a few moments, and then gave me some generic platitude about how the details of Mr. Psycho's appointments must be kept strictly confidential. That didn't stop me from asking everything that came to mind. How long had that woman been coming here? How often? What business did she have here? But the secretary was like a stone wall that refused to budge. I couldn't just leave it at that. I left the waiting room and asked the nearest employees if they could help me. When they saw how distraught I was, they were eager to help. But when I asked them if they had seen that woman who just walked by, they... Their attitudes changed in a heartbeat. They slowly turned away from me and returned to their work in silence. They ignored me, as if I wasn't even there. I haven't been treated like that since I was a schoolboy. I returned to the waiting room and paced back and forth anxiously, waiting for that woman to exit Mr. Psycho's office. I'd spent years fantasizing about an encounter like this one. I, I had rehearsed every single word I would say to her if I had an opportunity to speak with her again. I was fully prepared to tell her exactly how I felt about her actions ten years ago. Then I heard the secretary's voice. Mr. Psycho will see you now. I was baffled. That woman was still in the office, wasn't she? Why would the secretary send me in there? I was confused, but eager to see that woman again. I approached the door to Mr. Psycho's office. I remember that my hand was actually trembling as I gripped the handle. I took a deep breath and opened the door to his office, expecting to see her standing there, but... But she wasn't. The only people in that room were Mr. Psycho and his son. I entered the office and looked around in confusion, wondering where that woman could have been hiding, but, but she was nowhere to be seen. Mr. Psycho asked me what was troubling me, and I, I told him exactly what was on my mind. That woman, the one who walked into your office a few minutes ago, where is she? When did she leave? But Mr. Psycho didn't reply. He only smirked, as if he was uh, amused by the situation asked me to take a seat. He tried to talk about Academy, like usual, but I wasn't having any of it. I didn't want to let go of the subject, and I, I kept asking about that woman. Mr. Psycho's amusement quickly turned to irritation, and he firmly asked me to keep our conversation to the matter of Academy. Mr. Psycho can be quite imposing, even while remaining civil, and from that moment onward, I was too scared to pursue the matter further. I dropped it, and we proceeded to have a standard meeting. As ever, Mr. Psycho's son stood behind his father in silence. Mr. Psycho had never told me the exact reason why he keeps his son at his side during business meetings. It's uh, most likely that it's a form of training, exposing him to the type of interactions he'll be having on a daily basis once he inherits his father's empire. As the years passed, I have watched Mr. Psycho's son grow from a young boy into a young man. But I can count on one hand the number of times I've heard him speak. The meeting adjourned. I made one last attempt to bring up the subject of that woman, but Mr. Psycho interrupted me and bid me farewell. I knew that I wouldn't be able to get anything out of him, so I simply left. I questioned the secretary again, but nothing. I got nothing. I attempted to talk to the nearest employees, but they politely excused themselves. It was as if that 
woman was a taboo subject that no one was allowed to speak of, or that she was a mere hallucination, something I, something I dreamt up. No, no, I didn't just imagine her. I saw her. I saw her. I didn't catch her out of the corner of my eye. I didn't glimpse her for only a moment. We looked directly at each other, but... But what business would that woman have with Mr. Psycho? What could he possibly want from her? Why didn't the secretary acknowledge her when she walked in? And, and how, how did she leave his office? There was only one way to leave that room, and I was standing right in front of it. It, it doesn't make any sense. It, it... <sighs> I won't give up here. I'm going to dig for answers until I'm forced to stop. I don't know how much I'll be able to learn, but... But it can't end here. It... it can't. Fifteen years. That's how much time has passed. Fifteen years. Fifteen years watching it all spiral downward. Never managed to pull out of that nosedive. Fifteen years without closure. Without justice. What would my life been like if I'd never taken this job? Probably have a wife by now. Children. But there's no room for anything like that. Not with Academy taking up so much of my time. Even if I did have a family, I wouldn't be a part of their lives. I'd be too busy with Academy. I'd make a terrible husband. A terrible father. I sacrificed the best years of my life for this school. And what did I get in return? Wrinkles and hair loss from all the stress. A big, fat gut. I don't even recognize the man in the mirror anymore. Sure, I've made money. But what use is money when I never have time to spend it? I don't even know what I'd use it for. I never have enough spare time to develop a hobby. Well, I suppose I do have one hobby. I asked myself, what good is being the headmaster of a school? What opportunities do I have that nobody else has? Only one thing came to mind. Something taboo. But once the ideas in my head, it was impossible to just stop thinking about it. Eventually, I just couldn't find a reason to resist the temptation. It's not like I have anything left to lose. It's not like my life could get any worse than it already is, so... I gave it a try. And you know what? I don't even feel guilty about it. You see, filming someone does absolutely no harm to them. No harm whatsoever. It's not as though I post the videos online or anything like that, it has zero impact on their lives, so what's wrong with putting a few cameras around? At this point, I don't even care if I get caught. Actually, the risk of getting caught makes it a little more thrilling. And even if I did get in trouble, at least it would shake things up a bit. My life would finally change in some way. And for that reason alone, I would be happy. It's a win-win. I just wish I'd thought of this sooner. Whenever I sit in front of Mr. Psycho and give him an update about Academy, I expect him to be furious with me. The school's reputation and enrollment have both been declining for almost three decades, despite my efforts to turn them around. 
Mr. Psycho has every right to chew my head off, but he doesn't. As a matter of fact, he seems quite indifferent towards academia as a whole. Our weekly meetings feel like a formality and nothing more. Something we do merely because it became routine. I get the impression that he couldn't possibly care any less about Academy, and keeps it operational purely because closing the school would reflect poorly on Psycho Corp. Or perhaps because the school had become something of a monument to his missing daughter. Perhaps he's more sentimental than he looks. If Academy's enrollment numbers continue to drop at their current rate, Less than 100 students will be attending the school next year. At this point, it's clear that nothing I've tried over the past 30 years is going to save the school's reputation. So, with practically nothing left to lose, I propose something radical to Mr. Psycho. A complete rebranding. My research has shown me that Academy's declining popularity is directly connected to the school's reputation for notoriously difficult entrance exams and needlessly strict rules. The last thing I'd want is to allow the school to fill up with imbeciles and degenerates, but it has become obvious that the school's reputation will never recover unless sweeping reforms are made. I presented Mr. Psycho with a list of everything that would make the school a more welcoming environment. Allowing students to style their hair, wear makeup and accessories, customize their uniforms, bring smartphones to school, enter romantic relationships, access the rooftop and so forth. I even proposed making the entrance exams a little less difficult and lowering the tuition fees. I truly didn't know how Mr. Psycho would react. On one hand, he seemed apathetic about Academy. On the other hand, I was proposing a complete reversal of everything that Academy stood for. After I concluded my presentation, he sat in silence for a while. I wasn't sure if he was giving my proposal deep consideration, or simply pondering whether or not he cared at all. Eventually, he shrugged his shoulders and simply said, Give it a try. I'm not sure whether or not the rebranding is going to be a success, but for the first time in years, I feel excited. Like I actually have something to look forward to. The tedium of the last few decades had become unbearable. And these big, drastic changes are exactly what I needed to break up the monotony. I'm eager to see what kind of crowd these reforms will bring in. Here's to a new chapter in the story of Academy. Huh. Well, that was the weirdest day of my life. In the past 30 years, I've had over a thousand meetings with Mr. Psycho. When I walked into his office today for our weekly meeting, I could immediately tell that something was very wrong. Everything about him, posture, expression, demeanor, was completely different. He was slouching low in his chair, staring blankly at a wall. Didn't even bother to greet me as I walked in. More importantly, his son, who had been present for every one of our meetings over the past three decades, was not there. I asked, will your son be joining us today, to which he simply replied, there is no reason for that anymore. As I took my seat, I asked him if anything was wrong. He didn't reply. The heavy atmosphere of the room made me feel uncomfortable with the idea of attempting to advance the conversation. So I chose to remain silent until he was ready to talk. As it turned out, I would be waiting for quite some time. The silence lasted for about 15 incredibly tense and uncomfortable minutes. When Mr. Psycho finally did speak, he suddenly started rambling about Okinawa. He spoke of 
his experience as a soldier during World War II. How he volunteered to fight at the age of 17. How a bomb hit his dormitory. How he spent hours buried underneath rubble, staring at the corpses of his dead friends. He said he still sees them on the back of his eyelids every time he closes his eyes. He told me that buried underneath that rubble over 70 years ago, he swore an oath to punish the world for killing his friends. He swore to revive Japanese nationalism and expand the Japanese empire until it covered the entire globe. That's why he started his company. That's why he spent his life building the greatest conglomerate the world has ever known. That's why he toiled for over half a century until he had become the richest man on earth. It was all for the sake of building up enough power and influence to instigate a war. A war that he would throw all of his money and resources into until he had achieved the complete annihilation of every country that fought against Japan in World War II. But something happened that he didn't expect. Globalization spread Japanese culture across the face of the planet. Japan's former enemies now enjoy friendly relations with Japan. They eat Japanese food, watch Japanese animations, play Japanese video games. The process was sped up by his own inventions and innovations. There's a psycho product in every home. He can't find the motivation to go to war anymore, knowing that he'd be blowing up his own loyal customers. He dedicated his entire life to setting the stage for a blood-soaked military victory. But in the process, he inadvertently achieved a slow, pacifistic cultural victory. By now, almost everyone who pulled a trigger or launched a bomb during World War II was dead or elderly, so revenge had lost all meaning. Instead of feeling pride for accomplishing more than any other man in history, he just felt like he had failed his dead friends. After his long, rambling speech came to an end, he returned to staring blankly at the wall. I'm not sure why he confided all that information in me. I don't think it's because he considered me a friend. It's more likely that he thought of me... Well, the same way I think of this tape recorder. Just a stupid object where you can store your thoughts without consequence. After some more silence, he eventually spoke up again. He said, My health is failing. I will likely die soon. I will make no attempt to prolong my life. I am retiring as CEO starting tomorrow. My son will be taking over for me. You will be meeting with him from now on. He said nothing else. But I could tell that the meeting was over. That was most likely the last time I'll ever speak with him. Or see him in person. The next time I address someone as Mr. Psycho, I'll be talking to his son. The world's most famous man. Secretly a nationalist with plans for world domination. Harboring a half-century-long grudge. Huh. I would tell the media, but it wouldn't matter one bit. Psycho Corp controls everything that the media says or does. Even if I told the world what he confided in me, the media would never run the story. And it would quickly be dismissed as a baseless rumor or crackpot conspiracy theory. <laughs> I guess, in that sense, he really did take over the world. <sighs> out of all the different ways it could have turned out, I never imagined it like this. 
few days ago, I received an email with screenshots of certain directories on my personal computer. I don't know how anyone could have managed to accomplish something like that, but I can only assume that this person must have been some kind of top-class computer hacker. They threatened to expose what I've been doing unless I meet their demands. Being discovered and blackmailed has been my worst fear for over a decade now, but this person, whoever they are, isn't asking for money. Instead, they want complete ownership of a single room at Academy High. They intend to occupy this room for a full semester, and they have made it very clear that they are not to be disturbed for any reason. I have no clue what they intend to do in this room, but I'm not really in a position to decline. All things considered, this situation isn't as bad as it could have been. They could have demanded an absurd sum of money, and instead, all they want is a room. Their request seemed harmless enough, and there was a suitable room available, so I decided to comply with their demands. Well, it's not like I really have a choice in the first place. They also asked me to make sure that the room has certain equipment inside of it before they arrived. Computer monitors and hard drives. We already had a surplus of supplies like that, so it wasn't a problem. The tricky part was convincing the rest of the faculty not to enter a specific room for any reason. And not to question it either. I spent a long time mulling it over and eventually came up with a cover story that seemed convincing enough to believe. To be perfectly honest, I'm a little proud of it. I told the faculty that a special need student with extreme agoraphobia wishes to attend Academy High. Because of their intense social anxiety, they will remain secluded in one of the school's rooms, and are not to be disturbed, because it would trigger a panic attack. Teachers will record their lectures when class is in session, and email these recordings, along with class assignments, to the reclusive student once per day. I will personally handle anything else the student requires, such as meals at lunchtime. Some of the teachers thought my story sounded a little sketchy and wanted to hear details. Their questions were harmless, but I was sweating bullets and I felt like I was being interrogated by the police. Eventually, I convinced them to believe the cover story and the meeting ended with the faculty praising me for being so accommodating to a mentally handicapped adolescent. <laughs> I felt a little guilty for deceiving them, but it's far from the worst thing I've done. The only thing that matters is the end result. We now have a room which is off-limits to students and faculty alike. The hacker never told me their name, age, even their gender. It's frustrating. If I'm going to be put through such a harrowing experience, I at least want to know who's behind it. I set up a hidden camera outside of the room that has been set aside for the hacker. When I got into work this morning, I checked the recording, only to find that it had been replaced with a graphic of a black silhouette wearing a red wig, along with the words, Don't try this again. The message has been received, loud and clear. I asked the hacker if they needed anything else from me. Daily meals or anything of the sort. They told me not to worry about them and to simply go about my business as usual. They explicitly told me to pretend they don't exist. It's going to be nearly impossible for me to put them out of my mind when they could end my career with a single click. It feels like there's a slimy creature 
crawling underneath my clothing, and I simply have to grit my teeth and live with it. Then again, I don't really have any right to complain. Perhaps this is simply karmic retribution for my actions. It's very fortunate that these little therapy sessions were confined to cassette tapes. If I had been making digital recordings instead, the hacker would have a lot of very dangerous information right now. With that said, I no longer feel comfortable keeping these tapes around. They're too much of a liability. I should dispose of them, but... It would be such a shame. Thirty years of my innermost thoughts just tossed away like trash. It would feel like I'm wiping someone's memory. What, what was the point of recording anything at all if I was just going to destroy it one day? There was never anyone in my life who I felt comfortable expressing my anxieties to. This tape recorder has been like a... like a close friend who I could trust with my deepest secrets. I know I have to dispose of these tapes, but... maybe I'll keep them for a few days. Listen to them one last time. Try to figure out where it all went wrong. Then dispose of them when I've said my goodbyes. But there is one tape that I'm already prepared to part ways with. The tape I made after Mr. Psycho's recent uh, demands. It's far, far too risky for a recording like that to exist. That one must be destroyed immediately.